Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. In today's Mass, let us remember, first of all, uh, Vern and Luce Malabunga, who are celebrating their 51st wedding anniversary. And let us also remember the Abby family and Tibby. And let us also remember the Eddie and Candy de Bartolo and family. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church, and since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him, the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his Lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram. I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter which read, With this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I God with power over life and death that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note. You can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king. 
Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry and saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Parpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said? So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like a flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The Word of the Lord. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up and drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong but he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's first reading, one of the things we hear is this wonderful account of Naaman who was cured of his leprosy uh, by the prophet 
Elisha. And one of the things that we know from today's readings and from this time of Lent that we are in currently, we're in the time when the readings are meant to point us in a direction of conversion. And that lasts until essentially the first Monday of the fourth week of Lent. And then what we will see is that there will be much more emphasis on the mystery of Christ. So one of the things that we know from today's first reading is that it's meant to show us how we can have a deeper faith in our Lord. In fact, all of the readings today point us in that direction. And the first thing that we hear is that Naaman uh, was a valiant man, but he was a leper. So he already, as we know from uh, the biblical accounts, has a weakness, which is a severe weakness in the time in which he lived. But notice who helps him. It's the handmaid of the, his wife, who is a young girl who of Jewish heritage, who was captured in battle, essentially a hostage, a slave girl. And she recommends to the uh, wife that he should go to see Elisha in Israel. So imagine uh, if you are um, in this position of power that this really essentially the weakest and most insignificant person is the one who points you in the direction of the Lord. That's what happens in today's first reading. And the person that points him there, uh, she, he goes, he follows her, he decides to listen to her. That's the faith that we all have. And But notice that when he finally gets there and when Alicia tells him what to do, he's very angry because it seems too easy. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes um, I see this with uh, sometimes people that uh, ask for a blessing. They expect it to be very wordy and long or whatever. And when it's a short blessing, they think, well, that's all there is. Or maybe the other hand, uh, you go to confession and the priest says, uh, whatever your uh, penance will be, and you're thinking, well, I would have said four rosaries or something. So there's all kinds of things that we sometimes feel like there's, uh, we need to have a lot of it in order for it to really be effective. But in today's case, it's simply washing in this river. And it's only because his servant begs him to that Naaman is willing to do this. And he does it, and he is cured, and his skin is like that of a child, of a baby. So there's this miracle that happens in today's first reading. Now, when we come to today's gospel, what we see is that Jesus is uh, preaching and he is telling this story. And he's telling the story first of Elijah and the widow, Zarephath, and then of the story that we hear in today's first reading of uh, the prophet uh, Elisha and Naaman. And notice when the people hear this story, they become very angry. And we might be wondering why. Well, the reason why is because what Jesus is pointing out is that both of these stories take place with people that are not Jewish. They are outside of the faith life of the Jewish heritage. And so they are showing their faith in the Lord by first of all following Elijah's direction, and secondly by following the prophet Elisha's direction. And when the people hear this, uh, they become very angry because what Jesus is pointing out to them is that they're not hearing what our Lord is saying to them. They are rejecting him. And they not only reject him in their actions and in their faith life, but they reject him to the point where they desire to throw him headlong over a hill. So they basically are trying to kill him, which we also know is foreshadowing what we will be experiencing on Good Friday as a church. But one of the things that we also see in today's gospel is that Jesus quietly passes through them. It's not his time. 
And one of the things that I think for all of us, as we have our own faith journey and we encounter all kinds of difficulties in the course of our life, let us turn toward our Lord with that childlike faith that St. Therese certainly showed us. This tremendous confidence and trust in the Lord that he would listen to her, listen to us, and respond to our needs and our petitions. Our Lord desires that we have faith in him. We could say a simple faith, but the truth is what we need is faith. And it's not about how much we are going to do, but how much we have confidence in what our Lord will do for us. Let us be as confident as that little slave girl in today's first reading, and as confident as the widow, as we know from the prophet Elijah, who cured her son, who had passed away. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, first of all, for those who are least in our world, for those who are poor, for those who are hopeless, for those who suffer from any kind of illness, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray today, especially for the people of Poland, as we remember St. Casimir, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our Pope, Francis, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for peace in our world, and especially in those areas where people are suffering the greatest, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for first responders, for all those who help us in our greatest needs, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our troops serving throughout the world, that they may return safely to their families, we pray to the Lord. And let us now remember the intentions of all the supporters of the Society of Little Flower, we pray to the Lord. And let us now bring our own uh, intentions before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And let us remember our beloved dead who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Father in heaven, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will come for us, the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks humble our sinful pride, 
contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. And once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you. Saints among saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament repair, Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them and give them instruction that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. And at the hour of our death, amen. Our Lady of Carmel, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Casimir, go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.